Hello everyone. So in this free lecture tutorial, we're going to discuss how this portion of the curriculum that we began, I want to say probably around December or so, involving equilibrium and thermodynamics and electrochemistry all comes together. We're going to finally close that giant loop that encompasses all of these topics. Uh, and basically it all boils down to three essential mathematical relationships that are shown right here on the slide. Basically, we learned in the last chapter related to Gibbs free energy, which is a marker of the spontaneity of a chemical reaction, that the standard Gibbs free energy change is equal to negative RT natural log of the equilibrium constant. And basically, in this section of this chapter, we learned that there is also a link between the standard Gibbs free energy and the standard cell potential of an electrochemical cell. And that relationship is that the change in the standard Gibbs free energy is equal to negative NFE. And so just to clarify, N represents the number of moles of electrons involved in the electrochemical process. F is the Faraday constant or Faraday's constant. which is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. And E standard is the standard cell potential. And so we're able to predict the spontaneity of an electrochemical process by relating it directly to Gibbs free energy through this equation. Now, because of the transitive property of math, then we can set these two expressions equal to each other. So negative NF E standard is equal to negative RT natural log of K. So that if I solve for E, the negative sign drops out, and I get E standard is equal to RT over NF natural log of K, which is the expression that's shown in the bottom of this triangular diagram. And so if I wanted to calculate the equilibrium constant for an electrochemical process, then I could do so directly via this particular mathematical relationship. And so let's go ahead and actually try and apply this a little bit. All right, here's an example problem. Okay, suppose that at 25 degrees Celsius, I have hydrogen peroxide and it decomposes according to the equation that's shown. And the standard cell potential for this particular process has been measured, and it's 0.55 volts. Um, the first thing that I'm going to be asked for in this sample problem is to determine the value of the standard free energy change. All right, so that's a straight up application of this equation right here. So if I want the standard free energy change, it's negative NF E standard. Now I have E standard. I also know the value of Faraday's constant. I need to determine N how many moles of electrons are involved in the electrochemical process. And so that means I'm going to have to examine the equation in a little bit more detail. And the first place to begin is to assign the oxidation numbers. So again, in peroxides, oxygen has an oxidation number of negative 1. That would mean that hydrogen would have a plus 1 oxidation number here. In water, oxygen would have an oxidation number of negative 2. But hydrogen would have an oxidation number of plus one still, and oxygen as an element would have an oxidation number of zero. So if I'm looking at the oxidation reduction processes here, basically what's happening is I have oxygen gaining an electron here. Okay, so basically this is my reduction process. But oxygen is also losing an electron. So this would be the oxidation process reflecting a loss of one electron here. So at first glance, it would appear that the electrochemical process that I'm studying here involves a transfer of one electron. But keep in mind that there are two oxygens in hydrogen peroxide. And so as a result, basically, that means that this whole electrochemical process involving the oxygen is actually multiplied by a factor of two. And so as a result, that would mean that it's not just one electron that's being lost or gained, 
it's actually 2. So if I take that over to my equation, then this would be negative, and that's 2 moles of electrons times Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electron times the standard cell potential, which is 0.55 volts. Um, the units do look a little bit funny here, but remember that the volt, based on your reading, you should be able to recognize that volts are joules per coulomb. So that means that our coulombs would cancel, our moles of electrons would cancel, and we'd end up with an answer in joules, which is what we're looking for. And so if I actually do this math, I end up with about negative 106,134 joules, or negative 106 kilojoules. However, I was given the standard potential to two significant figures, and so it would be negative 110 kilojoules. Now, suppose that I need to calculate in the next part the value of the equilibrium constant. Well, if I want to do that, then basically what I should look to do is use this relationship solved for the equilibrium constant. And so basically, if I do that, I'll leave the algebra to u, but I would get k is equal to e to the NFE over RT. Now, if you take a look at the previous part, we already calculated what NFE is. Uh, basically, it would be the absolute value of this number. So that would be 106,134 joules. Then R would be 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And T, since we're calculating to 25 degrees Celsius converted to Kelvin, that would be 298 Kelvin. And so if I go ahead and do this math, I get 4.02 times 10 to the 18th. Okay. Now, if you look at this, basically the equilibrium constant and the Gibbs free energy should reinforce each other. Basically, having such a large equilibrium constant tends to indicate that our reaction goes very much favorably in the forward direction. Basically, it's spontaneous as written. And the negative value of delta G actually correlates with that. So that's something to look out for when you do these types of problems. Now, the last question is actually asking us to calculate a half reaction standard reduction potential from the standard reduction potential for the overall process given to us at the start of the problem. And they're going to give us the following standard reduction potential for this particular uh, half reaction. And so Let's actually look at this more carefully. All right, we have this particular process, right? Oxygen plus four moles of protons plus four electrons is going to give us two H2O. Okay. Now, if you notice, comparing that to the overall reaction equation up on top, I do want the water on the right-hand side of the equation. Okay. Now, that would mean that if this is a half reaction, then basically this particular half reaction that I was given within the context of the problem, if you notice the electrons are over on the left-hand side. I also have them on the left-hand side in the other half reaction that I was given at the start of this particular part. And so that would mean that if I'm going to add these two half reactions together to get the overall electrochemical process at the top of the problem, and that must mean I must flip this particular half reaction. Also note that this particular half reaction only involves two moles of electrons. I'm going to need four, so that means I'm going to need to multiply this half reaction by two as well. Doing that and rewriting that out, basically I get the following half reaction. Okay, and if I go ahead and cancel out everything that should cancel out, then I end up with the following.
Okay, and if you notice, that pretty much matches what I had at the start of the problem. And so let's see what that does. Uh, this standard cell potential was given as 0 0.55 volts. Okay, we were told that this particular half reaction has a half cell standard reduction potential of 1.23 volts. Now let's identify what process this is. If you notice here, basically what we've got is four electrons being gained. And so this must be the reduction process, which takes place at the cathode. Okay, now here, this is the standard cell potential that we're trying to find. This is our variable. Notice that here, electrons are being lost. And so this must be our oxidation process, which takes place at the anode. Then taking a look at our equation for calculating standard cell potentials from standard half cell reduction potentials, remember that that's the reduction potential of the cathode minus the standard reduction potential of the anode. Since I'm trying to solve for the anode, I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation explicitly for that particular variable. And so that's going to be our reduction potential of the cathode minus our standard cell potential. So that would be 1.23 volts minus 0.55 volts. And if you do that math, you should get 0.68 volts. Okay, so that's sort of an example of how we would apply all of these relationships to each other to analyze an electrochemical cell. Uh, work on the follow-up assignment. Obviously, we'll be reinforcing this in class. Um, also, I'll give you some reinforcement assignments over spring break. So that this way, when we come back from spring break, then we'll be nearly done with this chapter and ready to move on with our final review heading into the AP exam in the beginning of May. So if there are any questions, by all means, email, or if you'd like, bring up your questions in class, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good night.